Elantris was the first ever book that Brandon Sanderson published, and as such, it is the oldest Cosmere book we know of. I really enjoyed Elantris overall, but I did have my own issues with it with how certain aspects of it were written. And while I did have my gripes with the book, I also understood that Brandon Sanderson was a new writer at the time, and that he has improved a lot since. So today, I'd like to look at some of the negative reviews on Elantris and see just how other people felt about it. Even before we start, I have a feeling I'll agree with some of these people because of the issues I have with the book, but I still like the book overall. But I guess we'll only know once we try, so let's get started. And if you haven't seen my other videos where I do exactly this, please bear in mind that these videos are more reactions than pre-planned and prepared, so there may be a lot of tangents, rambling, and incomplete thoughts. So if you enjoyed my more structured videos, then be warned that this will not be that kind of video. Regardless, I still hope you enjoy it and find some entertainment in it. Anyway, let's get started with the first review. ATR says, it's amazing writing. Amazingly bad that is, okay. Two examples will be enough to make the point. Page 8, I guess that's P, P8 me, must mean page 8 I guess. They say, the awkward motion threw him off balance and an unseen schism in the cobblestone sent him into a maladroit skip that didn't end until he collided with a rotting mass of wood. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Look, this was Brandon's first book, so the, the prose definitely isn't good. And I'm not, you know, trying to say, oh, you should read it anyway, or that doesn't mean the prose is bad just because it was his first book. No, you can judge it based on how it is. I'm just trying to point out that Brandon has definitely improved as a writer, and the prose, while I've never been a huge fan of his prose, it has improved a lot since Elantris, but I can agree that, yeah, definitely wasn't the best there. They go on to say on page 9, there's a quote of, Brackish spittle dribbled down the man's chin, dropping from a mouth that resembled a mud-filled pot boiling on the stove. Okay, yeah, so definitely not the best, uh, what is this, a metaphor? Yeah, it's, no, a simile, I don't know, it's been years since I've taken high school English. Anyway, yeah, also definitely not the best. I, I kind of feel like this is low-hanging fruit, though. they not really criticizing, at least so far, I haven't read the rest of the review here, but it doesn't seem like they're really criticizing the actual plot structure or anything like that, and rather they're just attacking the prose. And in my opinion, the prose is kind of the lowest hanging fruit that it comes to when criticizing a book. There's a reason that the prose is only a small section of a larger subsection at the end of all my book reviews. I don't really consider it a major aspect of the book because different authors have different writing styles and different readers will have different preferences. So I can understand that I might not enjoy it, but I mean, I'm sure one of you might even say that you like the prose in Elantris, so I kind of feel like that's low-hanging fruit in my opinion. Okay, so they do go on to say here that the plot is uninteresting and the characters are flat and things like that, however, they're not really expanding on that. And I feel like that's the issue with a lot of these reviews you're going to find online, is that they don't, they make a lot of statements, but they don't really back it up. And I feel like this is my issue with this review, but... We've already been going for a while and we're only on the first review, so let's jump on to the next one. Idaho61 gave it one star, saying that the main character is so sanctimonious, it was a trial reading through the novel. Um, I don't know if I would say Rayodin was sanctimonious, but I do have my issues with Rayodin as a character. The fact, you know, that he's kind of, you know, I would almost say he is kind of a Mary Sue, Gary Stu type character, in that... You know, nothing really goes wrong, and he kind of overcomes all of his obstacles. He never really struggles. Now, if you've read Stormlight, you'll know Brandon has come a long way uh, since since writing this book. He has really learned how to actually make the characters earn, you know, their achievements and have them really struggle and push through the things that they fight against and the things that are actively working against them, whether it be their mental state or external factors. So, while I will agree that Raiden wasn't that great of a character, in my opinion, um, I don't think that it's indicative of the quality of the book. You have to remember that Elantris actually had three point of view characters, and for me, Rathen kind of carried the book. So, yes, maybe he feels that Raiden was sanctimonious or whatever, but in my opinion, you know, Rathen was strong enough to actually pull me through the book and actually help me finish it. So, 
I would recommend to this reviewer to, you know, at least give it another try and see what the other point of views have to offer. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so Sarah starts off by saying that it was her first foray into real fantasy. Um, it's kind of, I, I, I've mentioned this in the past, I'm not a fan of people leaving reviews for fantasy books when it's their first fantasy read. By all means, review books, and by all means, read fantasy. Please do read fantasy. It's like my favorite genre. It's probably, in my humble opinion, the best genre out there, just because of the sheer scope you can play with, next to sci-fi, of course. So definitely do read fantasy and definitely review books, but I, for one, know that if I'm going to, for example, read romance, and I'm not really a romance fan, but let's just say I were to go and try a romance novel. That first novel I read, I'm not going to review it. Why? Because I'm not familiar with the romance tropes, I'm not familiar with how romance novels are usually structured, how they're usually written, how the pace usually goes. I'm not familiar with it at all, so how can I give a review, you know, saying that, oh, this book is good or bad, when I don't really know if it is good or bad based on the rest of the genre. So, I ha I'm already taking issue here with Sarah saying that, you know, it's her first foray into real fantasy, but let's see what else she says. Now, she does mention here in the second paragraph that the characters were just cliches of people, saying that the princess is strong and smart, and the prince is perfect in every way, things like that, and you know what? Good on her for actually picking that up, because like I said, Raiden I've got major issues with in terms of how he's uh, developed, and Serene, same thing there. Those two are single-handedly the biggest issues Elantris has, and if Brandon ever decides to rewrite the book, I would be all for it. Now, I know he probably won't, and he has said he'll be doing sequels, so Elantris as it is will stay as it is, but definitely Serene and Raiden are my two biggest issues. I do notice that Sarah doesn't mention Raston here, so that's probably, you know, one of the good things she enjoyed in the book. But yeah, definitely have an issue with two of the three main characters, or at least, you know, POV characters. And finally, she mentions here that she'll be hesitant to read another in the genre for a long time after this. And that's kind of the issue, uh, you know, trying to introduce people to a uh, to a genre, is that they might not enjoy it. Now, I do disagree with Sarah in that I don't think she should have actually put a review up, but hey, if she wanted to publicly put a review up for a genre she never reads, that's on her. I just don't think that any uh, reviewer should. I kind of have, you know, my personal view on, you know, kind of codes of ethics that a reviewer should follow. First on the list is finish the actual book, which a lot of people seem to not do, but finish the actual book before you give any criticism on it. Secondly is, if you're not familiar with the genre, familiarize yourself first before you start reviewing, but I digress. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, the next one I kind of picked just because I 100% agree. Roma says, Galadon and Rathen deserve better. Raiden and Serene can eat dirt. <laughs> that is my horrid mantra after reading this. You know, you know, that's straight up facts. Straight up facts. I cannot disagree here. Galadon, love him. Rathen, excellent villain. Raiden and Serene, yeah, not, not, not a fan. Just not a fan at all. Like, can we, can we get rid of them? That's why I want Brandon to kind of just rewrite Elantris, but he's not going to, and I am doing the Year of Cosmere read-throughs now, so I'll be reading Elantris again soon. Maybe in my reread, I will be less cynical, maybe I'll enjoy them more, or I might even, you know, grow to dislike them even more. I don't know, we'll have to see, but for now, I'm definitely on board here with Roma. Even though she did give the book a one star, which I definitely wouldn't do, because despite the issues, I do think it is a decent book. Anyway, let's move on to the last review of the video. April here mentions a main issue with the pacing of the book that I've heard a lot of people echo and that I myself experienced, but let's read. She says, this started out to be a good book and you get drawn in and curious, but then it drags on, and finally when you only have about 50 pages left, it picks up and it's a good book again. And you know, that is actually an issue. I found that, you know, Everyone in the community of the Cosmere knows about the Sandalange. You know, at the end of the books, things just, you know, pack on and pack on. The pacing increases, everything gets tied up, all the plot threads are coming together. It, it's just this literary avalanche that just buries you. So we're all aware of that. I've found that that is actually much more pronounced in Elantris than in any of the other books. Reason being that 
from my reading of it last year, the pacing of Elantris is much slower from beginning to about, I would say, the 80% mark. Very slow pacing, and then once you hit that mark and the Sand Launch starts, it's just like everything happens in the last couple of pages. It's not really as, you know, spread out as most Sand Launches are, and and the portion of the book before the Sand Launch is much slower than most of his other books. So I can definitely say Brandon has absolutely improved as a writer since writing the first Elantris book. And I will definitely recommend anybody who hasn't read Sanderson yet to not start with Elantris. Because reading Elantris first will not give you an indication of how good of a writer he becomes. So definitely don't start with Elantris but absolutely give it a read at some point. Just understand that he had a lot of issues to work through and a lot of things that he had to improve on before getting to the point where he is today. But anyway, that's basically been it for today, guys. I don't know if I'll be doing any more for any other Cosmia books. I will be doing more for the Stormlight Archive in this fashion, you know, reading the negative reviews. But I think I have covered all my bases now with the other books. I've done Warbreaker, I've done the Mistborn trilogy, or at least the first Mistborn book. If you guys would like to see anything for the second era or any subsequent Mistborn books, let me know. But for now, I only plan on doing the rest of the Stormlight Archive books, just because of how big they are, so there's... Definitely a better chance of getting more in-depth reviews and discussions on it. But let me know if you'd like to see more. But yeah, that's been it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. You know I always appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.